The first book of Moses, called Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament, and divided the waters which were under the firmament, from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven. And the evening and the morning were the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven, to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs, and for seasons, and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven, to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales, and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat." and to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning 
were the sixth day. Chapter 2 Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it he had rested from all his work which God created and made. These are the generations of the heavens and of the earth, when they were created in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew. For the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. But there went up a mist from the earth, and watered the whole face of the ground. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and is good for food, the tree of life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river went out of Eden to water the garden. And from thence it was parted and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison, that is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is Bedellium and the onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. And the name of the third river is Hiddekel, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria, and the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man, and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone, I will make him an helpmeet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field, and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones, and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. ETW comments on Genesis chapters 1 to 2. Chapter 1, Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 3. Psalm chapter 33 verses 6, 9. A reservoir of means. God spoke and his words created his works in the natural world. God's creation is but a reservoir of means made ready for him to employ instantly to do his pleasure. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Ephesians chapter 3 verse 15. A larger family, infinite love, how great it is, God made the world to enlarge heaven. He desires a larger family of created intelligences. Genesis chapter 1 verse 27, man, a new and distinct order. All heaven took a deep and joyful interest in the creation of the world and of man. Human beings were a new and distinct order. They were made in the image of God, and it was the Creator's design that they should populate the earth. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. 
Genesis chapter 1 verse 29, Psalm chapter 104 verse 14, Fruit in our hands. The Lord has given his life to the trees and vines of his creation. His word can increase or decrease the fruit of the land. If men would open their understanding to discern the relation between nature and nature's God, faithful acknowledgments of the Creator's power would be heard. Without the life of God, nature would die. His creative works are dependent on Him. He bestows life-giving properties on all that nature produces. We are to regard the trees laden with fruit as the gift of God, just as much as though He placed the fruit in our hands. Chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2 verses 2 to 3, Exodus chapter 20 verses 8 to 11. Seven literal days, the weekly cycle of seven literal days, six for labor, and the seventh for rest, which has been preserved and brought down through Bible history, originated in the great fact of the first seven days. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 9, Acts chapter 17 verse 28. Man under God's supervision, the physical organism of man is under the supervision of God. But it is not like a clock, which is set in operation, and must go of itself. The heart beats pulse succeeds pulse, breath succeeds breath, but the entire being is under the supervision of God. Dear God's husbandry, dear God's building, in God we live and move and have our being. Each heart beat each breath is the inspiration of him who breathed into the nostrils of Adam the breath of life, the inspiration of the ever-present God, the great I Am. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4, Partakers of God's nature. The Lord created man out of the dust of the earth. He made Adam a partaker of his life, his nature. There was breathed into him the breath of the Almighty, and he became a living soul. Adam was perfect in form, strong, comely, pure, bearing the image of his maker. Physical power long preserved, man came from the hand of his creator, perfect in organization and beautiful in form. The fact that he has for 6,000 years withstood the ever-increasing weight of disease and crime is conclusive proof of the power of endurance with which he was first endowed. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8 Adam crowned king in Eden. Adam was crowned king in Eden. To him was given dominion over every living thing that God had created. The Lord blessed Adam and Eve with intelligence such as he had not given to any other creature. He made Adam the rightful sovereign over all the works of his hands. Man, made in the divine image, could contemplate and appreciate the glorious works of God in nature. Genesis chapter 2 verse 15, Eden, Heaven in Miniature. Adam had themes for contemplation in the works of God in Eden, which was heaven in miniature. God did not form man merely to contemplate his glorious works, therefore, he gave him hands for labor, as well as a mind and heart for contemplation. If the happiness of man consisted in doing nothing, the Creator would not have given Adam his appointed work. Man was to find happiness in labor, as well as in meditation. Genesis chapter 2 verse 16, 17, Genesis chapter 1 verse 26, Isaiah chapter 43 verses 6, 7. To repopulate heaven after test, God created man for his own glory, that after test and trial the human family might become one with the heavenly family. It was God's purpose to repopulate heaven with the human family, if they would show themselves obedient to his every word. Adam was to be tested to see whether he would be obedient. As the loyal angels or disobedient, if he stood the test, his instruction to his children would have been only of loyalty. His mind and thoughts would have been as the mind and thoughts of God. He would have been taught by God as his husbandry and building. His character would have been molded in accordance with the character of God.
Genesis chapter 2 verse 17, John chapter 8 verse 44, Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. Seeds of Death Satan's Work Christ never planted the seeds of death in the system. Satan planted these seeds when he tempted Adam to eat of the tree of knowledge which meant disobedience to God. Revelation chapter 13 verse 8 Death penalty not enforced at once. Adam listened to the words of the tempter and yielding to his insinuation, fell into sin. Why was not the death penalty at once enforced in his case? Because a ransom was found. God's only begotten son volunteered to take the sin of man upon himself and to make an atonement for the fallen race. There could have been no pardon for sin had this atonement not been made. Had God pardoned Adam's sin without an atonement, sin would have been immortalized and would have been perpetuated with a boldness that would have been without restraint.